Hey there, menopause sisters. Feeling like your body's playing tricks on you lately? From uncomfortable bloating to brain fog and annoying itchiness? We get it. And just wait until we share what we found. Join me, Marty Daly, and my co-host, Robin Duke, in the MenoWave Lounge as we explore how tuning into your gut health could be the key to kicking all those awful symptoms to the curb. Say hello to buttoning up those trousers without a struggle, reclaiming your focus, and saying goodbye to the embarrassing itchiness. Let's dive in together because relief might just be a gut check away. Welcome to the MenoWave Lounge, hot flashes and cool conversations. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that affects countless women around the world, menopause symptoms and gut health. From weight gain and brain fog and gas and bloating and low energy, these symptoms can just leave women feeling frustrated and exhausted and uncertain about their bodies. What many don't realize is that their gut microbiome plays an important role in relieving these unpleasant and uncomfortable uh, symptoms. Today, our guests, we are going to uh, unravel the connection between menopause and gut health and discover actionable strategies to reclaim vitality and well-being. Projecta Apti is a registered dietitian and gut health specialist, helping people with digestive issues to rediscover a sense of balance and well-being through the remarkable synergy of nutrition and mindful lifestyle shift. Projecta's approach is rooted in the idea of tackling the root causes rather than mere symptoms, and she passionately believes that a healthy gut lays the foundation for holistic health, influencing diverse facets of our well-being. We are super excited to have you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much, Robin and Marty, and it's my pleasure to be here for today's episode. I am super excited. Likewise, I was so excited to hear what you have to share. I know that our women are really going to want to hear this because so many of these symptoms that we're talking about, we all experience at one time or another. And But before we do that, we always like to start this show with just a little lighthearted, what we call menno moment, because as we all know, we are going through this and we just like to share the, the, the fun, the funny, and sometimes frightening moments that come up. So I'll start with mine. Uh, My family found out we need to move. And so we've been scrambling, trying to find another place. We've had a blizzard. My husband started a new job and my kids are on spring break as we're trying to go through all of our stuff and start packing. So this past week has been very, very stressful. And at the same time, my, my cycle, I was also (laughs) having some hormonal shifts going on and I could feel it. I'm normally a very sunny person. I'm normally a very calm person, cool and collected. And I'm very proud of myself for the way I've been handling this. That said, I've been noticing, especially over the last two or three days, just moments of agitation and irritation to the point I was laughing at my husband. I was trying to be like, be very calm, very patient. And yet I finally had to say, do you realize that you have not stopped talking? You are talking constantly. And he's a man of few words. And I, he's very stressed as well. He started a new job. We've got a lot going on. You know, my background with helping women with stress and anxiety and helping my clients, and I know the stuff, I can feel it and I can identify it. So the first thing that happened to me is like, okay, I'm really wanting to bite people's head off more so than usual. My husband, my kids, I just had this feeling of like agitation and my heart was pounding. And the first thing I think of is, okay, What's going on hormonally? Okay, yeah, it's that time of the month. Yay, that's still happening, I guess. But also I've got a lot of stress. So recognizing that kind of helps as a buffer so I don't just completely alienate everyone I know and love. And so then I have the tools to you know, do my own meditation, my self-hypnosis, the way I just ground and center myself back. How mm-hmm. about you, Robin? Anything exciting going on with you, Mentor-wise? Oh, well, yes, of course. I can definitely relate with the whole moving thing. Um, as I am also going through a move as well. So it's, yes, the definitely as a, as a life coach and a mindset coach, I definitely always check myself first, but I have found myself just really, my plate is full. My menopause symptoms do kind of come and go. You can always, you can know what the best things are for you to do, but then actually following through with them can be really, really tough, you know, Uh, especially if you're underneath a lot of stress. And I recognize the stress and I'm trying to let it go. I've been putting people, good people around me, 
that are more calm than I am. So I'm not hitting my emotional highs. And, but I've noticed that my gut health has been a little off because because of the stress that's of stress of moving. And it's just natural stress because there's a lot of work more involved. And so I have found myself a couple of times with people all around me and my, my gut is going, okay, I'm moving too. And so I've had to like, you know, step out of the room and, toot, 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 and then come back. <laughs> and I just noticed that I'm not a person that has like a lot of gas or bloating, but I have definitely noticed it a lot more this week or so, just because I am under a lot more stress, but I'm giving myself a lot of love and grace around this and, you know, giving myself the time to, to de-stress eat properly, get as much good sleep as I can, drink my water and, and stuff like that. But I just thought today was so, is, is so appropriate just because we are talking about gut health and I've been kind of going through some gut health issues. <laughs> How about you? Do you have some good sunny news for us? Probably, yes, because what you guys have talked about is definitely I have experienced in past and many times and surprisingly, last few days have been really good for me. I did have some stress a uh, few weeks back where I kind of experienced similar things. However, I definitely learned and decided one thing that how self-care is important. And I'm making time in my schedule, no matter what happens, for at least 10 minutes for meditation and about 15 minutes for breathing exercises. And I am so proud of myself that I have been consistently doing that and definitely seeing a difference because these are all holistic strategies and it takes time for those to kind of, you know, show some positive results. But last few days, because I'm consistently doing these two things, I have been experiencing much more relaxed and calmness in my body and mind and I'm not getting frustrated or agitated or even if the negativity comes to me I'm like you know replacing those thoughts with positive sayings positive affirmations also play a great role in all of this so I am trying my do trying my best to kind of do any kind of self-care I can and even if you know days are busy I'm making sure that that's the first thing I do before I start to work. So that's helping me a lot. I'm so glad to hear you say that. And I love that. And it gives me a cold chills because yes, the meditation, the taking that time, the breath work, the breathing exercises, mm -hmm. self-hypnosis exercises, or even just like kicking back and putting on like spa music or binaural beats or solfeggio frequencies and just checking out for 10 minutes 15 minutes a day, you know, that, that adds up. And it's like, what we always say when we work out, right. We don't just go to the gym yeah. once for 20 minutes and like, we're good yeah. for the year. No, we do no. this regularly. Mm -hmm. It That's trains right. our mind. It, it slows down our nervous system. It had helps with so much. So yes. And we're going to talk even more about that as we go on because stress and managing that stress is such a powerful tool for self-care and also for our gut health, which we're going to hear. And so thank you, Projector, for, for sharing that because that's like right up my alley and, and yeah. Robin's as well. And we're excited to dive in. So let's go ahead and do that. You know, to start out, Projector, let's dive into the foundation of our health. Could you explain what the gut microbiome is for those of us who don't really know and why sure. is it so important, especially sure. now as we go through menopause? Absolutely. So basically what I would um, like to imagine you all is gut microbiome is a community of live microbes that are residing in our large and small intestine. Actually, we have microbes all over our body. We have microbes on our skin, in our nostrils, ear canals. Vagina is the richest area of our body when it comes to, you know, microbes or, gut or, or the living microbes, you can say. Uh, however, majority of these microbes, they live in our small and large intestine. And imagine these microbes as a community of live microbes. There are over trillions of microbes and close to thousand different 
species or varieties of microbes. And uh, they um, live um, inside our body. They are involved in many different body functions that our body carries out. So in this community, there are some good microbes which are always working hard to keep us healthy mentally, physically, and emotionally. However, um, in this community, there are some bad microbes which are always looking for the opportunities to create more problems to our health. And definitely keeping a right balance between this good and bad microbes is very essential because our gut health is the foundation to our overall health and well-being. These good microbes, they are um, involved in the digestion of food, absorption of nutrients, uh, they help strengthen our immune system, they even regulate our mood. So they are involved in a lot of body functions. And of course, if those microbes are healthy, we are going to be healthy and happy. So that's why keeping a balanced gut microbiome is very, very important. That's really interesting. And I've always heard that your, your gut is like the queen of your body. So it's so important, the, the function that it does. And so when your micro is out of whack, what does that look like? Absolutely. When the uh, microbiome is out of balance or when there is um, an imbalance that occurs uh, within your gut microbiome, particularly in women, who are experiencing menopause, there are, of course, some signs and symptoms that one can experience. And these signs and symptoms may vary from person to person. Uh, some people may notice some tummy troubles, such as bloating or gas or irregular bowel movements, um, maybe constipation or loose bowel movements. These um, friendly, good microbes, they are usually responsible for keeping things moving smoothly but when they are not happy when they are not healthy then of course the digestion can go haywire now when also this gut microbiome is out of balance um, it can affect how well your body is absorbing nutrients from your food and uh, if your gut microbiome is out of balance the nutrient absorption doesn't happen optimally which means you feel brained and sluggish and you may feel you have not much energy which is more kind of consistently sustainable throughout the day the um, other uh, symptom that uh, some women can experience uh, is between their mood because it is very surprising to know that gut and brain are connected and they are like best friends forever. So if um, your gut microbiome is not in harmony, if it is not balanced, it can certainly mess with your mood and you might find yourself feeling more depressed or anxious or irritable, or you could be frustrated on little things. And these are some of the things that women can experience if her gut microbiome is out of balance. Now, menopause already throws a curveball at, at your metabolism. On top of that, if you are dealing with imbalanced gut, then it can make things even trickier. Some women may notice changes in their weight. Some may gain weight very quickly. Some women have a harder time managing their weight uh, because those gut buddies or those healthy microbes are out of sync. So your gut health can even show up on your skin, which is another uh, thing when I read it first time was a very much surprise to me because there is a connection between our gut microbiome and our skin health. When your gut microbiome is out of balance, then absolutely you may notice more breakouts on your skin or your skin may feel very dry or rough or itchy. There could be even some other skin problems such as acne or rosacea or even now. Those are some of the things that women can experience. So definitely if you are experiencing some of these symptoms, it might be worth giving your gut some extra love and some care. I noticed too, when we were talking the other day with the skin issues, we had like the dry, itchy skin, but also mm -hmm. sensitive area itching, like anal itching. 
Is that yes. part of the, the gut? Got May I ask, what is it about this time of change, this hormonal change, menopause, perimenopause, that seems to have such a big impact on, on our gut health? So, of course, I mean, the hormones, there are a lot of changes happening in women's body when they are either in menopause or going towards menopause. And there could be a lot of imbalances in hormones. On top of that, if your gut is out of balance or your gut microbiome is out of balance, there is a stronger connection between your gut health and your hormone health. Mm. So if you are dealing with imbalance and imbalance, the definition of imbalance could be you do not have enough of the good healthy microbes or your gut microbiome doesn't have a larger diversity. And because of that imbalance, it can definitely impact some of the hormones that are already out of back to go more out of imbalance and that can definitely affect you know your overall health it can impact mood for some people whether or it can impact some skin problems so it all depends on how this imbalance will be manifesting in your body some people they will only experience gut related symptoms bloating gas constipation or irregular bowel anal itching or you're using the bathroom every day but it's an incomplete bowel moment some people do not have gut issues but they have problems with their mood depression anxiety mood swings so it all depends how these gut imbalance is showing in your body so that varies from person to person Okay. So it could be the hormone changes impacting the, the gut balance, but also the, the fact if our gut's out of balance, then it's going to make our symptoms just whatever's going weird with our hormones. It's just going to make it that much yeah. more mm -hmm. unpleasant. Got yeah. it. It can, it can make things worse. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I kind of like it just amplifies all the other, the things that are going wrong with our body. I was really surprised about the joint pain though. That really is interesting that there are so many things that we would not obviously see being connected to mm -hmm. our gut health and we would attribute them to maybe something else. Stress and the anxiety is in our previous conversation, you had mentioned that that is, that's one of the bigger things that is connected to the gut health. I find this really fascinating that it is so, so connected with so many of our symptoms and we can't look at just one symptom and try to isolate it to something because it is more like a bigger connection. And we have to look at it as a whole, like a puzzle mm -hmm. piece than, than just one singular kind of piece. So when a woman comes in and sees you, how do you assess what is connected to the gut health. Typically what I have seen in my practice that women are walking in my office, you know, saying a wide range of symptoms from bloating to gas, constipation or loose bowels, or they're having some weight problems. Either they are unable to lose weight, maintain weight, or they are having more challenges in losing weight. Some women are gaining weight too quickly in spite of doing everything correctly. Joint pain is another symptom, headaches, migraines. As I was saying earlier, that um, it all depends on how your gut imba imbalance is manifesting in what part of your body. So of course, getting to the root cause of the problem is very important because with gut healing, a generalized approach or a cookie cutter approach doesn't work because everyone's gut microbiome is very unique. And I always like to give an example. It is like a snowflake, how each snowflake is very unique very, very similarly, our gut microbiome is absolutely very unique. Even scientists have found that two identical twins, their gut microbiome could be completely different. And because of this main reason, I get to the bottom of this. I have some questionnaire and some forms that um, my client completes before uh, seeing me, which kind of gives me a good idea about how she is eating, what type of food choices she makes, 
how is her lifestyle what time she goes to bed how is uh, her interaction with you know people in her world how is her relationship with her co-workers if she is working what kind of stress she has all these questions actually helps me get to know more about that individual and from that information i start to put the pieces of this puzzle together to see what pieces are missing and based off of this i try to get to the contributing factors of gut imbalance and once we get to the right kind of contributing factors to that particular women's health then the strategy is set or the action plan or how are we going to heal because when we talk about digestive health it is not just the small intestine that we need to take care of or it is not just the large intestine we need to take care of or it is not just the gallbladder that we need to look into it is a 30 feet long tube that begins in your mouth and ends in anus and every step of the digestion and each part of this digestive system is very very important and longer any person is dealing with digestive issues obviously things become a little bit more complicated so we have to kind of evaluate the beginning to the end and that's why i sometimes say that i use north to south approach north being your mouth and south being the other part of the digestive system kind of coming back to you can look at a pair of identical twins and their gut biomes are completely different are we born with healthy gut biomes how does our gut biome get messed up Okay, there are many factors, but uh, nutrition plays a big role, as um, I'm sure all of you can imagine. Now, what you eat has a big impact on your gut microbiome. Uh, Loading up your diet with processed foods, sugar, unhealthy fats, foods with added colors, they all can uh, throw things out of whack. And fiber-rich foods instead, or plant-based foods where you are eating variety of fruits and vegetables and whole grains that will keep those good microbes or your gut buddies happy and thriving. Stay away from processed foods and try to eat foods in its most natural form. Again, I am focusing on plant-based diet. That does not mean that you need to be vegetarian You'd certainly need to have protein and even meat, but definitely try to make sure that you are getting enough plant-based foods in your diet as well, because these microbes, they are vegetarians and they love to eat on uh, plant-based foods. So keep that in mind whenever you make choices. Ask a question to yourself. Did I eat my fruit today? Did I eat vegetables? What kind of vegetables? Did I have enough of those vegetables? So all these are the questions you should start asking yourself before you make any food choices. So nutrition definitely plays a big role. The other contributing factor is stress. And stress is when you are either ongoing stress or there could be a time frame where you are under super stress and you could feel that, okay, something is wrong with me. My digestion is kind of off or I'm not feeling good, whatever it is. But when you are feeling stress, your gut buddies, they can feel it too. And chronic stress can definitely mess the balance between your good and bad bacteria. And it creates actually a stress can cause a perfect environment for your bad bacteria to grow very rapidly. And that's why ongoing stress definitely can lead you to develop an imbalanced gut. So that's why we talk about managing the stress and implementing stress management practices every day. The Third contributing factor is excessive use of antibiotics. So while antibiotics, they are great at knocking out all the bad bacteria, the infection that you're dealing with, but they can also sweep out all the good bacteria from your system. And overuse of these antibiotics can disrupt the gut microbiome and um, leave you very vulnerable for all sorts of problems. The... Next one I definitely want to stress is um, lifestyle habits because many people think that, okay, if I clean up my diet, 
I will have a healthier gut. Well, partly the answer is yes. But again, if you want to have a 100% healthy gut, fixing your diet alone is not going to give you those results. And that's why lifestyle habits are equally important. So lack of sleep, going to bed late at night or sedentary lifestyle, excessive use of alcohol, smoking, all those things definitely can disrupt your gut microbiome. Your gut buddies, they thrive on healthy habits. So making sure that you get good enough sleep, at least I would say seven hours minimum, being physically active, whatever choice of activity you like to do and definitely ditching those bad habits can keep your gut microbiome happy. Well, that sounds really interesting. And I know that uh, one of the things that we do talk a lot about is how to balance not only your lifestyle and your lifestyle choices with your healthy eating, with exercising, with getting enough sleep and enough rest, meditating, keeping that stress away. When you look at the whole picture of it, you know, you can see right in the middle how the gut is just like the center of all those pieces Mm -hmm. and how having a healthy lifestyle, just making some different changes to not only your eating, but your getting exercise and sleep can really make a big difference and quickly as as well too. Some of these things, you know, they build up over time. And then with our menopause symptoms, they get amplified. And so trying to stay educated about knowing yourself and what you're putting into your body and how you're managing your lifestyle can really help you in the whole picture. In my coaching, I always look at the whole picture and how to help people to balance that. I can relate to having a lot more on my plate right now because I am going through a move. I am really trying to offset the activity and busyness with getting enough sleep and getting out and walking and getting out in the fresh air and just trying to realize, number one, that I do have a lot of stress in my life going on right now, but I recognize what that is. And it's only for a short period of time and doing some of these things in order to keep myself healthy. Jack, I have a question uh, going back to the antibiotics and the overuse of antibiotics. Say I have strep throat and I have to take, you know, five days of antibiotics. Is it wise to follow that up with a good probiotic to replace what may have been killed off or do I need to do something deeper? What are your thoughts on that? So good question. If you're going to be uh, on antibiotics for whatever reason, it also depends on how long you will be on antibiotics. If it is a short course of five to seven days, it's probably okay to follow up with good quality probiotics afterwards. Now, this is very interesting and very surprising at the same time, but scientists have found with various kinds of studies that when someone has to be on antibiotic for anywhere between seven to 10 days, the gut microbiome definitely get disrupted and it can take up to six months for that individual to get his gut health back to normal. So it can have such a severe impact of those antibiotics on your overall gut health. So absolutely following up with good quality probiotic is important. But again, longer you are on antibiotic, you probably will have to follow through more strategies to get your gut health back on track. So starting off with probiotic is absolutely good, but definitely making sure that you're eating healthy, you're making right food choices, you're staying away from processed foods, you're sleeping on time, you're not taking as much stress or following some stress management practices, all is what you need to do. And longer antibiotic course means your gut health is more messed up. Right. Mm -hmm. But yes, to answer your question, good quality probiotic is what I would highly recommend after a course of antibiotic, along with some other strategies. At the same time, I would like to let everyone know that biotic is not a magic pill. I have seen many women asking me that, okay, I'm taking a probiotic, then am I good? Is my gut health perfect? 
Well, the answer is no, because it's it's a very small piece of this entire puzzle. And it is a good thing that you're taking a probiotic, but along with that, you will also have to um, incorporate some healthy lifestyle habits. What differentiates a good quality probiotic from a poor quality? Is it the number of bacteria in there? Is it the type of coating? Is it a brand? What are your um, thoughts? There are, well, there are definitely certain good quality brands that I recommend probiotics if I have to recommend it to my clients. Generally, soil-based probiotics are good. When a probiotic bottle needs to be refrigerated in my opinion those bacteria are not of good strength so you want to look for a probiotic that can stay in good condition even on shelf and okay. a soil based probiotic is important the other factor i definitely would like to let everyone know that it is a good idea to change your probiotic every 3 to 4 months mm. because you want to add a variety of strains into your body and not just few specific types of strains. When someone has a wide variety of strains in their gut microbiome, that means that individual has a healthier gut microbiome. Okay. That's good to know because I used to have that question too of what is acidophilus? What do all these different things mean? Right. Do I need one versus the other? But that makes total sense then. Okay. Well, I'll take this for three to four months and then I'll switch to a different. And Correct. that way I'm Correct. really getting that good variety. I, I want to also make one point that it all depends how much deeper you want to go into your health and uh, how customized you want to make. But there are like comprehensive stool tests available, which actually will tell you which species of good microbes are missing from your gut microbiome. Based off of those test results, I can be very specific in suggesting a probiotic for my client based off of what species of microbes are missing from their gut microbiome. Would that test also show like, like the bad stuff? Yep. It gives a lot of information from what kind of infection you might be possibly dealing with, what type of good species are missing from your gut microbiome. It tells about the various inflammatory factors in your body and which ones are elevated. It tells whether your body is absorbing good healthy fat that you get from diet or it's being kind of excreted in your bowels because that's not a good sign either. It tells us about uh, how your pancreas are functioning, how your stomach is functioning. It gives a lot of information. It's like taking a candid picture of your entire gut microbiome to know where things are wrong and where things are right now looking good. I have a, a question your immune system is also governed by the balance in the gut, right? Correct. Correct. Yep, absolutely. Because 70 to 75% of your immune cells, they reside in the lining of your gut. So when someone has a healthier gut, of course, the lining of the gut also looks healthy, which means all those immune cells that live in that lining, they are well protected, they are healthy. And if they are healthy, they are going to keep you healthy. But when someone has an imbalanced gut, the lining of your your gut is not looking healthy. It looks permeable. It can have some gaps and holes in between those linings. And because of that poor quality of the gut lining, the immune cells that reside in that gut lining, they also don't look healthy. They are weak. And if they are weak, they are not going to do their job correctly. Uh, which means you're going to catch infections quickly. You may get sick quickly. I have even seen many people with intolerance to perfumes, intolerance to gas, fumes. They cannot stand in Bath & Body Works store for more than 10 minutes. They cannot tolerate scented candles. So all these things are telling me, if someone tells me this, that they have a weaker immune system. And that could be because of the gut lining is not healthy. Is that what leaky gut syndrome is? 
Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Leaky gut syndrome or, or clinical term for that is increased intestinal permeability. And isn't it true that when that happens, then the wrong stuff starts leaking through and, and then your immune system is like fighter pilots or like fighter jets and they're used to a attacking the bad stuff, but then everything's coming in, right? right. And exactly. then they're having to attack everything. And then that can, for those of us that have a tendency towards autoimmune diseases like I do, then that's going to fire up mm -hmm. the the super immune system that's going to yeah, start attacking correct. everything. Even your own yeah. cells, right? Absolutely. Because you, yeah. if you, if someone is dealing with leaky gut, where the gut lining is unhealthy, it's permeable, um, it has those holes that are formed obviously mm -hmm. everything is escaping into your bloodstream at the same time um, all the toxins unwanted substances can easily get inside and if everything is going into your bloodstream including undigested food obviously your immune system goes crazy and immune system eventually start to attack on everything no matter whether that's a true enemy to your body or it is not an enemy immune system decides okay let's just attack everything considering or thinking that it is bad for you and mm -hmm. that's how person eventually may develop autoimmune conditions where immune system it is very unfortunate but it starts to attack your own cells and isn't yeah. that also when we have joint pain, that isn't that also like what's causing the inflammation Correct. throughout <laughs> everything? It all goes Correct. back to the gut. Now, let me ask yeah. you this. You mentioned the, the fecal test to look at the bacteria. Are there other tests to check your gut health? I think you'd mentioned there was a hair test. Uh -huh. Yep. There is, I normally start with the hair test. It's called hair tissue mineral analysis, or the abbreviated form is HTMA test. And this HTMA test is essentially, you send your hair sample to the lab for testing. And our hair is a soft tissue and soft tissue stores minerals. So basically by sending your hair sample to the lab, or that lab measures the minerals that are stored in your um, hair tissue. The minerals are the energy spark for your cells. So this test shows what minerals you are lacking, where is the imbalance, whether you have excess of any minerals, whether you have enough storage of any specific minerals, but your body is not able to utilize those correctly. Because without the right balance of minerals, your cells cannot perform the function that they need to do. And that's why it is important to have the right balance of these minerals. And this test gives information about whether you are a person who has a slower metabolism or a fast metabolism. This test gives us the information on how your nervous system is functioning and working, whether your nervous system is holding on to a lot of past negativity, trauma, any bad incidences that had happened in your life. And if that's the case, then obviously we need to work on that because our physiology and psychology, they are interconnected. Mm -hmm. Without healing one, you cannot heal other things. Improve your physical health, your psychological health has to be healthy. Otherwise, you won't see good changes happening in your physical health. So this test tells about that. It tells about the detox pathways, how they are working in your body, whether they are clogged up or they are functioning okay. It tells a lot about your gut health, inflammation, thyroid. I mean, it, it gives a bunch of information about your overall health and where we need to work you know, to kind of fix the problem. Hmm. You just mentioned detoxing and where does detoxing fit into this whole picture? So gut health and detox, again, they are interrelated. When someone is dealing with imbalanced gut, obviously your body is having a lot of inflammation inside. Your body then tries to hold on to toxins. Your liver kind of gets sluggish because liver is doing extra job and it happens so much that sometimes it is beyond your liver's capacity to do the detoxification on a daily basis. So I have seen that 
people who are dealing with gut problems, who have an imbalanced gut microbiome, these people are also dealing with some detox issues where their body is not able to get rid of the toxins on daily basis. Because as we all know that we are surrounded by toxins and there's no way we can completely stay away from all toxins. But definitely there are strategies that we can implement to reduce our exposure, to minimize our exposure to toxins that are surrounded by us. And if we try to do that, obviously it's going to have less pressure on your detox pathways. So cleaning up your gut will also help your detox pathways to do its job better. One of our first episodes was with Bonnie Rose talking about clean cosmetics and our beauty products and our mm -hmm. cleaning products. And that's so fitting because it's not only just the stuff that we're putting into our body ingesting, you know, with food and drink, but it's yeah. the toxins that we're coming into contact and anything that we can do to minimize Correct. Absolutely. And there are simple, simple steps that you can take. And if, even if you try to minimize your exposure to toxins on a daily basis, of course, your gut is going to be happy too. So it works both ways. Uh, so definitely make sure that you're eating organic foods when it comes to fresh produce, minimizing your exposure to pesticides and herbicides that are used or a minimal use of plastic. Get rid of all the plastic containers from from your kitchen or make sure that you're using cleaner personal care products mm -hmm. all these things will definitely minimize your exposure which means your gut is happy your detox pathways are happy your liver is happy it's a win-win mm -hmm. are there supplements that we should be taking in order to support our gut health it's very individualized, but I would definitely say that some of the things that you probably want to consider taking is vitamin D because vitamin D plays a big role in your gut health. The one other thing I highly recommend to my clients is collagen powder and that you can mix it up with various foods to incorporate it on your daily diet. It's not really a supplement, but it's a food item, but bone broth is another good food that will help soothe your gut lining. So bone broth can be used for making soups, or you can just warm it up and drink it as it is. The other supplement that I think of is glutamine. And glutamine also works well with having a thicker stronger and healthier gut lining. So glutamine supplements are available either in a capsule form or in a powder form, depending on your choice, but that can be a good supplement to take. That's great because mm -hmm. I would probably throw all those into my city oh, every day. And that's a that's nice way awesome. also to get your healthy greens and fresh vegetables and fresh fruits. I use uh, coconut water as a base, but then I, I put in a lot of my supplements, my powder supplements, and then they just go right down because I take a lot of supplements every day. And so if I can cut down, put them in my smoothie, it's, it's a lot easier for me. I like the um, idea of bone broth because that's something that I make. I'll get a nice bone with the good marrow in it and cook that down. And then I make my own bone broth and it's mm -hmm. just so much more flavorful. And then I can put my vegetables in and then I can have that. And just, it's so soothing for my symptoms. I used to order this coconut lime bone broth that was oh, just wow. divine. It was so good. I was be my little afternoon snack. I would, I'd heat that up and just drink yeah. it. Just like I was drinking my afternoon tea, but it was a coconut lime. It was delicious. I love. Oh, wow. Is there any danger of over supplementation? Is that bad for our gut or good for our gut? Yes. I mean, over supplementation is not a good idea. Many times people think that, okay, I'm popping supplements in. That means I'm doing some healthy work to my body. I personally feel that, yes, supplements do play a role, but they are not going to replace the foods or the healthy foods that you will be choosing in your diet. Because Everyone needs to remember that each time you have any kind of supplement that goes through your liver and that adds more and more work for your liver because liver is a checkpoint and 
everything has to pass through your liver and liver decides what things the, it is going to put back into your system to kind of circulate in your blood versus what are the things that liver is going to consider as a waste material and go through the detox pathways and get it out of your body. So taking a bunch of supplements means you're probably even adding some extra stress on your liver and eventually that can affect your liver's capacity to do its job efficiently. So choose your supplements wisely. Take it only if they are needed. And that's why they are called supplements. They are not replacement to your food. So if you can get something through your food, always remember that that's the natural source. Like taking vitamin C supplement, if you can get vitamin C rich foods in your diet, your body is going to absorb that vitamin C much better than taking a supplement. But if you are truly low with vitamin C or if you are really dealing with some infection and if you want to kind of boost your immune system for that period, then of, of course, take vitamin C supplement, but keep it for a short period. Wow, this has just been so informative today. I'm fascinated with how much that I've been learning. And definitely for me, a good takeaway is just number one, really paying attention to what my body is telling me. And if I, if I'm out of balance and I could become out of balance, pay attention to that and really question what is my lifestyle going on? What is my diet going on? Am I getting enough mm -hmm. sleep? And then, you know, make these changes. I mean, some of these things are so easy to do, but it takes listening to your body in order to implement them. I, I love all this. Are there any final thoughts, Marty, that you would like to share with us? Well, what I was thinking um, as we've been doing this, talking to Projecta and as well as the other providers, I always say I've learned so much, but I hope that the women who are listening to this conversation as well as the others are able to do like I am and start to put piece together in their mind, almost like check marks of, okay, you know what? Sleep is important. Am I getting enough sleep? There's we have our days when we, when we can't, but we're so many decades past. Oh, I don't ever have to sleep. I don't get any sleep and I can just power through what well, that might've worked when we were <laughs> younger. And I have to remind myself is it is okay to get sleep. It is important for me to check my gut. And what am I putting into my body? Look at my supplements, look at the exercise I'm getting, the nutrients, all of these that we're learning about are kind of forming a big picture of as we're going through menopause and as our hormones are wreaking what feels like havoc on our body, there are ways that we can minimize the impact on ourselves. Not all of us are going to be lucky to smooth sail through this without any symptoms at all, but there's resources, there's other providers, there's information. So we can start putting this together. Okay. I'm going to take a look at what am I putting into my body? How is that tying? How's my gut health tying into what is going on with my skin or what's going on with my mood? all of that. So I think this is a wonderful thing that we're learning so much and to putting it all together and project the thank you so much for this very important piece because gut health is the, it is like the center point. Queen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. And project yeah. how can women work with you? I have a website and you can go and find out more about my services there. It's rightnutritionworks.com. There is a 15 minute complimentary call that I, I have scheduled that if you are interested in moving forward. And I would love to chat with you during that call to learn more about your health challenges and how we can work together if we are a best fit. So you can definitely visit my website there and you will find a lot of information about what I offer and what my approach is and how I work with my clients. And if that's something resonates with you, then you can certainly book that 15 minute call with me. Don't you also have a fix your gut yes, download? Yes, absolutely. So I have a free guide that you can download and it's available on my website. Plus I'll send a link as well, which can be added in the show notes. And it is a free download called Fix Your Gut. Basically, it will give you a structured framework of what can be done in order to take your gut health to the next level. Because what I strongly feel, and I this is what I even I tell everybody that 
do not wait until your symptoms are uh, severe and they are bothering you and they are disturbing your life. Pay attention to your body. Listen to your body. Uh, your body is constantly giving you cues. So try to listen to those cues and take a right action right away. Paying attention to how different foods and lifestyle factors are affecting your gut health is very important. And this guide will definitely uh, give you that structured framework so that you can uh, start your healing right away. Mm. Wonderful. I'm going to download that. That is awesome. Well, we've talked a lot today about the physiology and what was it, Project? You said physiology and psychology? Psychology. Psychology. Yes. Correct. Okay. And and as you have listened, that is my wheelhouse, that is Robin's wheelhouse as well. What we talked about today, some specific things that came up, dealing with trauma, managing stress, learning how to breathe quitting smoking, making better lifestyle choices, which includes looking at the food that we put into our body. I know a lot of women struggle with sugar right now. We're not feeling great and we want to eat the sweet stuff. And that is really bad for our gut health. So if you're struggling with any of those things, or if you need guidance on improving your mental health, your stress, making better habits, making better choices, feel free to reach out to me at marty at martydaily.com. You can visit my website, martydaily.com. And there is a 45 minute webinar that talks more about how our subconscious mind impacts how we feel and what we can do about it, especially as we go through this stage of life during menopause. At the end, I offer a 45 minute free consultation to talk to me and find out what's going on with you and what your pain points are. And if we can help you, great. We'll show you what that looks like. If we can't, if this isn't something that we can help with, but we know one another, I can refer you to another provider. I'm happy to do that. So just visit, or you can shoot me an email, marty at martydaily.com. Find me on Facebook, send me a message. I'm out there, I'm happy to help and happy to refer you out to anyone else who can. Robin, you wanna pick up from there? Well, thank you, Marty. I am so blessed to be uh, a part of this conversation. My uh, expertise in coaching is body-mind connection. And what I do is I help women to create healthy tools in their life to help their lifestyle, their mind, and their body stay healthy, balanced. And I have on my website a nice PDF download that talks about how to do that, the different strategies and tools that you can have in your life to recognize what your body is saying to you and how your mind interacts with that and what that connection is so that you can have a balanced and whole lifestyle. I offer a free 15 minute conversation and you get to talk about whatever it is that you want. And it's a comfortable, easy conversation to have. And I look forward to anybody that would like to specifically have issues that, are, that you're going through that pertain to the menopause symptoms, because that is also another body life change. As you know, as women going through menopause symptoms, it affects our lives on so many different levels. So uh, check me out, check my website out. I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook group called 50 Plus Living Your Best Life. And of course, all the information will be in the notes below. And I just really, I want to thank you for joining us today on the Middle Wave Lounge. And we've so enjoyed chatting with you and learning more about our gut health. And this has been such an insightful conversation about um, menopause and gut health. And, and I just encourage everyone, if you like this, please subscribe, share it with your friends. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and YouTube. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for extra tips and, and updates. Until next time, tune in and keep those cool conversations going. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in the Meta Wave Lounge. If you'd like to connect with Marty, Robin, our guests, or any of our expert Meta Wave care providers for personalized advice and support, head on over to our website at menowave.org and fill out an assessment that will match you with a provider who knows just how to help. Remember, you don't have to face menopause alone. Our team is here to provide the guidance and care you deserve. So take that step towards reclaiming your well-being and connect with a Menowave care provider today. Thank you again for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next episode of the Menowave Lounge, Hot Flashes and Cool Conversations.